So what do you need? Besides a miracle. Fuse. Lots of fuse. <laughs> The Matrix, released in 1999 and is directed by the Wachowskis, who have also directed such films like Bound, Speed Racer, Cloud Atlas, Jupiter Ascending, and the rest of the Matrix franchise. And this movie is starring Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, Carrie Ann Moss, Hugo Weaving, and Joe Pantoliano. And the reason why we're talking about The Matrix today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my longtime donators and contributors on this channel. Usually he's recommended ending like the craziest and stupidest shit I've ever seen on screen but I guess he also has some class about him too and this is coming from Dr. Camp. Thank you very much for this recommendation. You also recommended the other films in the Matrix franchise. Of course I've already covered the Matrix Reloaded a couple of years ago so we're just going to be watching this movie and also Revolution later on this week but a thank you very much for this recommendation and this is one of those tentpole films that defines a decade and defines really a generation. It's one of those movies that come from out of nowhere and all of a sudden it takes the world by storm and the world is just craving and demanding a franchise out of it and a continuation of the story. Thomas Anderson is a standard corporate man working in a cubicle. However, he also moons light as a computer hacker by the name of Neo. And as Neo goes along, Along his mundane life, he is feeling that there is something off about the world that he lives in. And as he goes farther down the rabbit hole of life, he realizes that there's one person who could probably give him all the answers to everything that he is feeling. His name is Morpheus. And upon meeting this man, he gives Neo two options. The first option is to go back to sleep and forget any of this ever happened. Or the second option, which is to jump down the rabbit hole and to see how far it goes. As I'm talking about this movie, the plot synopsis is actually very difficult to talk about because the great thing about this movie, and I always love it when films do this, you're going along for a good 30 and 40 minutes thinking that the film is going to be one thing, but then all of a sudden a choice or a situation happens where the film completely turns on its head, does a complete 180, and all of a sudden we are going down this weird different path that you didn't see happening. Sometimes it works terribly for films, other times, like this one, it kicks ass. It's a metaphorical bat that the screenwriters and directors take and slap you across the face with. You think you know, you think you know what this movie's about, Brother, you have no idea. Not everyone has seen The Matrix, and I think some people are put off by The Matrix and the concept and maybe the fan base around it because, you know, Matrix fan people, I mean, we're all kind of weird. I remember going to Suncoast one day in the mall, right? Remember those places called Suncoast and video stores where you went to go purchase VHSs and DVDs? Well, I guess it wouldn't have been DVDs at the time, but still. I remember seeing this guy walking in and he was dressed all in black with a long trench coat, wearing sunglasses inside like a dork, and he had his grandmother with him and he goes up to one of the black and white pictures of all the special characters from classic films on the wall and of course right there is Neo in his black trench coat from the Matrix and he's like grandma I want a coat just like that one day and I always wondered since that day if he ever got that trench coat because this movie was so influential it was so cool it made everything just cool wearing all black wearing trench coats wearing sunglasses indoors yeah that's freaking cool. And you want to know why it's cool? Because Lawrence Fishburne and Keanu Reeves, they can do kung fu, but they're not breathing heavily at the end. It's such a philosophical movie, asking the audience a whole bunch of these what-if questions, and I'm sure it made a lot of people kind of sit back and wonder like, okay, the world that I'm actually living in, is this, is this real life? Or am I being watched right now? Am I actually plugged in and I have no control over this? Kind of feels like that in some ways, doesn't it? But the main thing that this film is known for, other than just being so freaking cool, is its innovation in special effects and cinematography. The slow motion 360 shots where they had several cameras just lined up in a circle and when you went through one action, everyone was filming at a certain rate and then they just pieced together it all and it's all just one seamless spinning around that everyone in cinema after 1999 was trying to emulate and was trying to put into their action movies. Parodies of this technique were done all throughout the early 2000s because again, The Matrix 
was still freaking cool. One of my friends in high school for a class project actually tried to do the 360 spin and you know, you, you only have so much technology with your small little camcorder and taking pictures. But, you know, it was it was okay. I don't have the footage to show you, trust me. So, you don't want to see that. Believe me, you don't. Lawrence Fishburne is great as Morpheus. When he comes on screen, you know that he is the guy with the answers. And he's the guy with all of the faith in everything. And in this prophecy that surrounds the One. Or if you rearrange the words, it spells out Neo. Whoa, what? I believe this was my first blood with Lawrence Fishburne, so every time I've seen him after that, I just always go, oh, that that's Morpheus. He's carrying himself, he's cool, he's collective, he knows everything, he has faith in everything. I like that guy. I want him to be in my life. Sadly, he's not. Carrie Ann Moss, I think, is actually really great in this movie, too. I don't think she recaptures the greatness that she had in this movie and the other two films. We'll talk about that later on this week. And Keanu Reeves is Keanu Reeves in this movie. And I think at the time I was thinking that, you know, anyone could really just play this role because they're the fish out of water. They're Alice in Wonderland. They're like, well, what's going on? I don't know. What? How? Why? Where? But now looking back on it many years later, it's kind of impossible to imagine anyone else in that role just because it's surrounded Keanu Reeves for so long and it's helped revitalize his career. It was one of the things that established him. It was one of the things that revitalized him because we all remember just how, again, cool Keanu Reeves was in this movie. And he is the perfect person to carry out the Wachowskis dialogue that they write in their script. They're always seeking for that trailer line or that very suspenseful line or the badass action flick line, if you know what I mean. I believe I'm the one that can bring him back. But in order to get to those lines of dialogue, they have to stretch out the scene and they have to stretch out the dialogue so much more. So in order to do that, they put in a whole bunch of lines of like, what? Huh? What? Why? How? As opposed to Neo just coming out and saying, you know, the Oracle told me one thing, but I don't believe it anymore, but I do believe that I'm the one who can bring him back. He has to break it up into one-liners and then to break it up with that with just like one-word questions to get to that trailer line, to get to that suspenseful line. I don't know what's going on, but I do know one thing. What? That I believe in something. What? I believe I'm the one who can bring him back. It just sounds more epic when you stretch it out like that. And it's all throughout this movie and all throughout this franchise. And if you're not realizing that, go back watch this trilogy and write down or take a tally of every single line that's just like a one word question of like what, who, where, or how. There's a lot. Trust me, I've done it. That's why I have to go. Why? Because I believe in something. What? I believe I can bring him back. The Matrix is a tentpole film. It is still rewatchable today. It still holds up today. It's just a brilliant piece of cinema. It is a moment in time in cinema that sadly the sequels just pale in comparison. They had no chance of meeting to the greatness that this movie has. And it has an amazing villain in Agent Smith with Hugo Weaving. I know this was before the time where he was kind of sick of all the big blockbuster films and he doesn't want to do them anymore, but this is one of the things that put him on the map with his performance and it's great. His monologue about how he wants to get out when he's talking to Morpheus and trying to convince him to give him the codes, I have that monologue just saved in my brain and when I'm just kind of sitting down or if I'm doing something or if I'm tinkering with something, I will just recite that monologue because it's so freaking good and he is so freaking great. If any of you want to be film buffs or get into just movie watching in general, this is one of those tentpole movies that you need to see. This needs to be watched because it was so important in the history of cinema and it was so important really in the history of pop culture because at this time, everything and everyone wanted to be the Matrix. I'm going to give the Matrix five out of five Blu-rays. I think I see blue. He looks glorious. So guys, if you've seen The Matrix, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button to make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm releasing my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.